All right, now ain't that a classic? Sadly, that's almost my time, folks. When the clock strikes midnight, you know I'm gonna play you out with a good one. But I think we got time for one more before then. Let's drop that needle, shall we? You've got me questioning my position. Am I just feeling out? What do we think is more sad? Getting a dozen cupcakes and the guy at the register asking if you're having some kind of party and you saying yes, knowing full well you'll be sitting on your bathroom floor alone on your birthday eating the whole box or... Bexy, are you in there? Come on, I know you're home. Why'd you change the locks, huh? You don't know what it's like to be a single girl in the city. There's some real unsavory characters out there. Bexy, it's just me. Why don't you just open up, huh? Happy birthday. I thought you forgot. Of course I didn't forget. How could I forget our birthday? The big 2-1. You should be having a drink. How's about you let me in and we have one together? Mm. I don't think that's a very good idea. Oh, come on. Haven't you missed me? Not even a little. You know, Mom called us earlier. She's sad. Says she hasn't heard from you in a while. I didn't know what to say. But I, I'll tell her you stopped by, I guess. What makes you think I care about that bitter old hag? I think you better go. But oh, come on, I'm only joking. Please. I'm warning you, Callum. You better stay away from me. I don't want to have to hurt you. <laughs> you hurt me? That's fucking rich. You know, they all think you're the strong one. Mom, Dad, the Order. But I know something they don't. I know your weakness. Yeah? What's that? Me? You think this stupid projection spell will save you? It might! But you know what? It won't save him! It won't save me! Ah, <laughs> uh, the first stroke of midnight. Time for this old geezer to return home from the ball. Here's one more golden oldie for all you lonely hearts out there. Thanks for tuning in to WKJP The Juke. And happy holidays, folks. This is Keith Sampson, signing off. If suffering's a way to earn your keep I better start putting miles on my feet Happy birthday, Bax. But I'm so tired wandering. Yeah, I'm lost. Can I be forgiven? All right, y'all. I think I'm going to need a moment to process that all. What do you guys think? Holy moly, what an ending. Now, before we unpack all that and figure out what the heck is going on, you know the drill, folks, so say it with me now. Hey, all you ghouls, geeks, and scream queens. Very nice. Y'all have been practicing, haven't you? 
Well, I'm still Jocelyn Mathers, and we are back to unpack another gut-wrenching episode of Bloodlines, and as always, have a little fun along the way. This is Behind the Screams. Tonight, I'm joined by Lucy Warringer, but you all know her as Bex Rayner. Let's give her some love. Hi, Jocelyn. Lucy, let me tell you, it is such an honor to have you in the hot seat tonight. What a performance. Well, it's such an honor to be here, Jocelyn. Thank you. And thank you guys here and at home for always tuning in. You guys are the best. Well, how could we not? We're hooked. As soon as I think I can breathe for a second, I'm sucked back into the drama. And can we talk about that ending for a sec? I mean, that was absolutely heartbreaking. (sighs) Definitely felt like a punch straight to the stomach. That's not the Callum I know. So evil. I know, right? (laughs) Looks just like him, but he's far away now. You gotta remember that. And that's so hard for Bex, and it's even hard for me, you know? The nuances you demonstrated throughout the whole scene? I mean, unbelievable. And the cupcake. Mm, I asked for fun fatty. Well, there was certainly nothing fun about it. (laughs) That's for sure. Do you think there is any chance of Callum making a full recovery? Well, let's put it this way. Beck certainly hopes so. As for me, as Lucy, I am absolutely begging the writers to help me set him free. I don't know how much longer I can take Freddy's demon voice. Ah, but the audience loves it. I mean, it's great in the scenes, but then you hear, cut, and you're at craft services getting a bagel, and you hear, do you want some scream cheese with that (laughs) and you almost punch freddy's lights out for scaring the out of you and for making a horrible pun (laughs) (laughs) no that sounds like freddy well i for one can't wait to see what happens next i'm already like is it Thursday yet? Hey, me too! And there's a lot of talented people working to keep us all at the edge of our seats. I'll say, look at me. I'm at the edge of my seat right now. And look at my shoulders. I should really pay someone to remind me to drop my shoulders and unclench my jaw every 10 minutes. (laughs) I hear you. You? Stressed? But I don't see any worry lines or blemishes on that perfect face of yours. Well, to be honest, it also takes a lot of talented people working to get me to look like this. Stop it. You didn't wake up like that. Cause you look flawless. (laughs) Believe it or not. It looks so natural. Those boy brows are to die for. Thank you. But if I can just... Complain for a second. Who decided that the next beauty trend would be a full face of makeup that makes it look like you aren't wearing makeup at all? Feels like a waste of money. Amen, sister. Can't my face be enough? Well, not all of us are blessed with a face like yours. Oh, come on now. We're both stunning. Inside and out. So, talk to me. How does it feel to play such an iconic, strong female role like Bex? God, I mean, it's a honor. (laughs) I'm sorry. It really is, though. Bex has taught me so much. Like what about? Like about how the world works. About myself and my own confidence. She's helped take me to a new level. No more, you know, apologizing for 
being me. Yeah. Speaking of confident leading ladies, I know you know what we have for the rest of the evening, but I'm not quite sure the audience does. Should we fill them in? Let's do it. Last week, Femme Fatale published their annual TV's top 20 list of badass female characters. I think you know where this is going. Charlie, let's go ahead and lower that screen. Now, they say the names are listed in no particular order, but we think Lucy's ranking is pretty accurate. Let's go ahead and show him, shall we? By all means. That's right, everybody. Our very own Bex Rayner made the list again. That's what, four years in a row now? It's an honor just to be nominated. Oh, she's too humble, folks, isn't she? Is this award deserved or what? And let's be honest. You look hot in this action shot. I mean, come on, right? Adios, amigo! <laughs> well, thank you. You even got the sexy scar right across the lip. I actually asked for it there. Makeup wanted to go for the eyebrow slit. Girl knows how to ask for what she wants. Not something that used to come naturally, let me tell you. But thanks to Bex, I've gained a few more notches of confidence. Aw, how wonderful is that? And that's probably my favorite wig they've used for me. Oh, wait. You're telling me that's a wig? Oh, yeah. All of my hairstyles throughout the seasons are. Most people wear wigs on the screen these days. Not the men, let me tell you. A lot of receding hairlines out there. <laughs> that is true. But that sets a sort of unrealistic standard, don't you think? Flawless flowing hair even when you're in the heat of battle. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah, my thoughts exactly. Well, Lucy, you are always our number one badass lady. Oh, the list isn't in any specific order. I know, but still, our Bexie is not like other girls. Well, she is and she isn't, right? What do you mean? Well, I find the phrase, not like other girls, to be a bit sticky. Sticky. Like, what does it really mean? Well, I'd say a teenage girl who goes to school by day and slays vampires by night isn't your average kind of girl. <laughs> right, sure. I guess I mean in terms of how these tropes are translated into pop culture and absorbed by young girls. Hmm. Tell me more. Well, I feel like I spent my whole, you know, childhood trying not to be like other girls because that was what I saw on TV. I wanted to be special. All the girls in TV or movies were special because the protagonist, who was always a man, by the way, saw something unique in them that made these girls not like other girls. And this was usually something that went against gender stereotypes. Like a girl who would order a large pizza instead of a salad and still be blonde and skinny and perfect. Or a girl who hated shopping and liked to fix cars, drink beer, and listen to ACDC instead. And it was always a man, or a boy, really, who'd see these traits and say... I like you, you're not like other girls, but what does he know? Aha, uh -huh. interesting. It's all from the male gaze. Exactly, Jocelyn, exactly. We shouldn't have to change ourselves to be unlike other girls, solely for the attention of men, either. Well, I like attention. <laughs> 
And there is nothing wrong with that. Me too. You are who you are, and I am who I am. We wear makeup. I love shopping, and I can change attire. Hmm. I think I see where this is going. Bex is bad at math. She's like me. But she's also good at kicking some major vampire butt. I, too, am fighting the demons and darkness in my life. We are the same. And we're not. I think that what I'm trying to say is the way she's written on the page, she's got layers. And I like adding my own layers to her as well. She's one of a kind to me and she's not not like other girls. She's just unequivocally herself. Other people don't come into play and that's awesome. I like it. Well, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So any final thoughts or feelings you want to share with the class? I think that's about all I got. Just hope it made sense. Don't doubt yourself, honey. I, for one, learned a lot. Well, that's our show, folks. Tune in next week for another Edge of Your Seed episode of Bloodlines. This episode of Behind the Screams was written by Cassidy Jones and directed by Marissa Tandon. It featured Connor Brannigan as the DJ, Casterline Villar as Bex and Lucy, Torian Brackett as Callum, and Madison Garris as Jocelyn. Sound design for the Bloodline scenes was by Alexandra Tandon, and sound design for the in-studio scenes was by Newton Shottlecotty. To keep up with our show, follow us on social media at That Vamp Show, or join us on our website at tandonproductions.com. 